Hello and welcome to our Code for Kids course on my first website, lesson number three, called Protect Our Planet. We're really excited about this lesson as it's got to do with recycling and it looks at all the different ways in which we can recycle, um, how we can be sensible shoppers when we go and, and buy our groceries and then lastly, uh, the Rings of Responsibility video, which looks at comparing where we can be digital citizens as well as responsible citizens. All right, let's get straight into our first tab on lists. Task number one is exactly the same as all the other tasks. And remember, we here at the bottom, we can move through using the little links at the bottom as well as the, the tabs at the top. So it looks like a website as well as being able to open and share it uh, with teachers, with friends, with parents, as well as with principals or management at the school. So we're going to start on the two types of lists that they are. They are UL and OL. The UL list stands for unordered list and the OL list stands for an ordered list. The LI are list items, i.e. all these little things that are in the list. So here we have a UL, which is an unordered list of bullet points, um, actually square bullet points. And then the list items is where we're going to write those bullet points. Let's have a look at task number two, change the square to a circle below. So here we're going to write the word circle. And we're going to see on the right hand side, it changes to open circles. The other one you can use is disc, which changes to a full circle, but we'll get back to that. Task number three, complete the question mark below. This list is a, where order doesn't matter, it is an unordered list. Task four, change the type to A. At the moment, the type is one, and we're going to change it to A, and then it goes A, B, C, D, all the way down there. Where order is important, we know that this is the first, second, third, fourth, and so it is called an ordered list. OL and UL are called opening tags, and they come at the beginning, so we can see them there, OL. And up here, there is UL. And then forward slash OL or forward slash UL are the closing tags. Um, what is the difference between the opening and closing tags? Well, you can have that discussion with your learners. And that would be the forward slash. In between that are, as we mentioned, the list items. Challenge here are the different types of lists. Type 1, A, lowercase a, capital I, and lowercase i. And then we've given a picture down at the bottom here. Can you change your list above to look like the highlighted one in the image? So learners would have seen this in Word or in Google Docs. You can have a look at all the different ones. And now we're actually making that type of list. So we're going to go to type above. This is an ordered list. And so if we put a little I there, it should change. They can also try the capital I, but we'll go back to the lowercase Roman numerals in order so it's still an ordered list. Okay, that is our first page. We move over to shopping. We're gonna be sensible shoppers here. Remove the question mark and write your name. They could be, they're getting used to that. This is always just a repetitive task that all learners can do without any assistance. Remember, if they are looking for assistance, they need to ask their friend for help. Then you need to see where both them and their neighbor have tried by using their mouth and not their mouse. And then lastly, you can help them by asking, what do you think you should do? What is your first step? Answering them in the Socratic method. Okay, so task number two, complete the question mark below. In a shopping list, we do not need order in a shopping list, so it is an unordered list. Add the five fruits to go shopping. So we've left little question marks here um, for them to fill in, and so on. So they can add five more fruits Task number four, complete the, the two question marks below. So we're still going with complete the question mark. In order to be a sensible shopper, I must remember my reusable shopping bag. Just keeping learners aware of what it is that we're actually doing. We're talking about recycling, but now lists is a great way to look at a shopping list um, where it's unordered. Obviously, people going shopping in their family might use it a lot or themselves to write a list. But then as we move down to this making a chocolate banana mug cake, a recipe is a great example to use an ordered list because the steps are really important. So we're going to have a look at the written steps to make the banana mug cake. We've started them for you. Mash the banana in a bowl. 
add that as a quarter cup add the quarter cup of peanut butter and the egg together mix two teaspoons of sugar and three teaspoons of cocoa powder so here we are just filling in and we are writing out the recipe in full so mix the What's brilliant is that they can see these steps coming up. They can see that it's an ordered list and that order would be important in a recipe. So if you microwave each cup for one minute, 30 seconds before you've put the ingredients in, it's obviously not going to work. Uh, you're not going to have anything coming out and not going to make that banana mud cake, mug cake. But also they've learned a new recipe. So if some of, the, some of them are into baking, it's obviously a nice thing they can take home. Again, they can share it. Um, send the link to their parents or, or to their own email and then go and actually make the chocolate banana mug cake. We've got a challenge here at the bottom. Add to the shopping list on line 18 the ingredients I would need to buy to make the chocolate banana mug cake. So what we want them to do is link the difference between the ordered and unordered list. Here I'm using an ordered list. What we want them to do is go back up here and add, they might have already had banana here. We want them to add all the ingredients they would need to go shopping from the recipe up here into the shopping list. It's a very realistic task. Obviously, if, you, if you're taking ingredients from a recipe, um, you would put it onto your shopping list. So we're trying to make these tasks as relevant as possible. Right, moving on to recycling. Protect our planet. Here we are looking at ways in which to protect our planet. We've got um, the task that explains the three different words. We've got reduce, reuse, recycle. So uh, leading in from the shopping bag, we can say that a way in which we can reduce um, our consumption is to not buy shopping bags every time we go, to not buy straws is a big one. So we want them to go and research what reduce, reuse and recycle mean and in just one sentence they can put their definition there. You've got recyclable materials and non-recyclable materials. We've had ordered and unordered lists there again. And we want them to, in task number four, to change it to an unordered list because the recycled material is, the order does not matter. So we need to change that to a UL and a UL. Cling wrap or plastic wrap is also not recyclable. Now we get into the recycling process. And what we want from here as challenge number five is to make this an ordered list both the opening and the closing tag, because this is the recycling process is labeled here in this GIF, and it's obviously very important that this is in the correct order. Change the ordered list and complete the question mark. So we've got truck dropping off materials at a recycling depot, humans organizing the weight, rotating discs separating cardboard from waste. Rotating discs separating. We can see here we are at number four, and so we need to look there and that is, the question mark is paper. Fantastic. So there we can see um, the recycling process. We followed the GIF there and we've gone all the way through. All right, finally, rings of responsibility. We're gonna press play and watch this video. It's a really, really interesting video and it's, it's absolutely brilliant. It's um, courtesy of Common Sense Education. Uh, replace the question mark with the correct answer. Obviously, you would have to watch the video as well, but your learners can watch the video together. If there's earphones available, they can also plug in their earphones and watch it. But the question is, what is throwing a plastic bottle in the ocean being compared to? And what it comes out as is that it's being compared to leaving important information online. Both of those things are, if you throw a plastic bottle in the ocean, it's there forever. If you put your information out online, um, pictures or, or personal details, that's going to be there forever as well. We want the learners to think about this a bit. Always the last sort of page and last 20% of our lessons are for those learners who are pushing a little bit harder, might be for the challenge. So we really do recommend them to take this seriously um, and, and to put effort into it. So in task three, they can write the message behind the video. In task four, they can write down three ways about being responsible online. I think the best one, or one of the, one of the best ones is to be careful 
with my password. Got to keep our passwords secret. Got to change up our passwords often. Um, and, and something to, that is brilliant to learn when they are of a young age. Okay, so that is the end of lesson number three on lists and protecting our planet. We hope you have a fantastic lesson and that your learners really enjoy it and come out as much more sensible citizens, both digitally and in terms of looking after our planet. All the best for teaching the lesson.